Welcome to our review on respiration and exercise. So we've already encountered the fact there are two types of respiration. And what we're going to do here is have a look at them in a little bit more detail and understand what they actually are and when they occur. So first of all, aerobic respiration then takes place inside the mitochondria, which if you remember are one of the organelles present in all of those animal cells. Now we've got two types of cell that have more mitochondria than others in the body. And those are the liver and muscle cells. And the reason for that is because the liver and the muscles actually need more energy. And because the mitochondria are the site of aerobic respiration, that means they can generate more energy. So your word equation then, first of all, for aerobic respiration is glucose plus oxygen makes carbon dioxide plus water. Now, the reason that the plus energy goes into brackets is because energy isn't actually a chemical. So if we're writing a word equation, then we shouldn't actually include the plus energy technically because it's not a chemical. Therefore, it's not something being made as a result of that. It's a byproduct and it is energy. If they were to ask you to write the balanced symbol equation, then the formula for glucose is C6H12O6. And then you would be adding six oxygens, which are O2. And that would make six carbon dioxide, CO2, plus six water, H2O. So the easy way to remember that is that six is in front of everything except for the glucose. We do have this thing called the respiratory quotient. Now, quite simply, we've got an equation there for you in the middle where the respiratory quotient, or RQ, equals the carbon dioxide produced divided by the oxygen used. So in the question, if they're asking you to calculate the respiratory quotient, they would tell you how much carbon dioxide is produced and how much oxygen is being used. You just divide the carbon dioxide by the oxygen and that gives you your respiratory quotient. We may also talk about this thing called the metabolic rate. Now an organism's metabolic rate is basically a measure of how quickly all the reactions are occurring within that organism. And what we can actually do to work out the metabolic rate then is thinking about the aerobic respiration. So what we actually find is that as the aerobic respiration uses oxygen, the amount of oxygen that we use in that set period of time is going to indicate the organism's metabolic rate. So it's a good indication of what the metabolic rate is, just looking at how much oxygen is actually being used in any given time period. So if we consider what actually happens when we exercise, during exercise, our muscles are going to need more energy in order to carry out more contractions. So if they need more energy, respiration has to increase. For respiration to increase, then we're obviously going to need more oxygen because we're going to be using more oxygen every minute, which means we'll also be producing more carbon dioxide every minute. As a result of this increased use of oxygen and increased production of carbon dioxide, we see this knock on effect to other organ systems within the body. So first of all, we see our heart rate has to increase. And that's because we need the heart to pump faster in order to then circulate a greater amount of blood around the body in that given time period. Because in our blood, remember, we're carrying the oxygen and the glucose. So the faster the heart beats, the more oxygen and glucose we can get to our muscles. At the same time, because we're obviously using more oxygen and producing more of this carbon dioxide, what we find is our breathing rate also has to increase because as we breathe at a faster rate, then what we're going to be doing is removing an extra amount of carbon dioxide from the body. So that means that the carbon dioxide, which is toxic to us, can't build up and we also take in more oxygen. If we now start to think about anaerobic respiration, then we know that this is one that doesn't actually need the oxygen. So what actually happens in your body then is when you start hard exercise, your heart rate doesn't actually increase quickly enough to supply the extra oxygen that you need for aerobic respiration to take place. As a result of that, our cells are going to have to use anaerobic respiration to release energy until our heart rate does increase enough. Now, when we think about anaerobic respiration, we only need to worry about the word equation, which is quite simple, it's glucose, makes lactic acid. And remember, because energy isn't actually a chemical substance, then we don't include it in our word equation, but it is also made. So what we actually find is we are able to make this energy, but 
anaerobic respiration releases far less energy than our aerobic respiration does. It's kind of a stopgap until our heart catches up. The big downside to using anaerobic respiration then is that we do create this lactic acid because lactic acid is toxic and as a result of that we get that pain and fatigue in our muscles as it starts to build up. So what we actually find then is the production of this lactic acid is a limit on how long anaerobic respiration can actually go on for. As we mentioned in our enzymes lesson, all these chemical reactions that we're talking about are controlled by enzymes and respiration is no different. So our respiration is controlled by enzymes and that then means that the rate of respiration will be affected by the temperature and pH, just like we saw in the enzymes lesson. Just to remind you what that actually means then, for the temperature then, as we increase the temperature, the rate of respiration will also increase. So that means we'll release more energy. If we think about pH, as we produce lactic acid, then because it's an acid, it's gonna lower the pH. So that reduces the enzyme activity and therefore the rate of respiration. So that's why our muscles get fatigued and stopped contracting because we have basically reduced the enzyme activity that's needed for respiration by producing the lactic acid, which has lowered the pH. So once our muscles have become fatigued as a result of this lack of oxygen leading to us having to carry out anaerobic respiration and generating this lactic acid in our cells, then what we find is even after we finished exercising, then our heart rate and breathing rate stay high for a while. Now the heart rate has to stay high because it's got to carry lactic acid to the liver quickly so it can be broken down. And the breathing rate has to stay high because we need to breathe in extra oxygen to deal with that lactic acid. So the amount of oxygen that we actually need to deal with the lactic acid we've produced is called the oxygen debt. And until that's been repaid, we will continue with that increased rate of breathing.